Welcome back to A320 Knowledge, your trusted source for Airbus expertise. Today, we'll be diving into a tutorial on the A320 landing technique. In today's tutorial, we'll use Airbus FCTM guidance to cover the following critical aspects of a landing. The importance of a stabilized approach. Key techniques for executing the flare. Effective pitch control during landing. Strategies for managing crosswinds and recognizing when to go around and ensuring a smooth, controlled rollout. The cornerstone of a successful A320 landing is a stabilized approach. This means that the aircraft should be on a steady flight path with consistent speed, sink rate, and alignment with the runway. A stabilized approach ensures that you have full control of the aircraft as you descend toward the runway. For a stable approach, the flare height, which is typically about 30 feet above the runway, must be reached at the right airspeed and flight path angle. Maintaining these parameters helps ensure a smooth transition to the flare and touchdown. At this point, the auto thrust and flight path vector are two critical tools that will assist you in maintaining the correct approach. Before we discuss flare technique, it's important to note how you calculate your approach speed, or VAP. This speed is determined using wind corrections, which the FMGS will help calculate. Keep in mind that as you get closer to the ground, wind intensity often decreases and the wind direction might change, especially in northern latitudes where wind tends to shift direction. This can reduce the headwind component near the ground, and that's where your wind correction to VAP comes in to compensate for this effect. Always be aware of this potential change in wind when landing, as it can affect your final approach speed and angle. As you approach the ground, the flare law activates and auto trim ceases, giving you full manual control of the pitch. The A320 flare technique is conventional, requiring gradual back pressure on the side stick to manage descent. Typically, the flare begins around 30 feet in stabilized conditions, but this height can vary due to several operational factors that affect the rate of descent. For example, at high elevation airports, the increased altitude results in higher ground speed during approach, which increases the descent rate and requires an earlier flare. Similarly, a steeper than usual approach slope, greater than the nominal 3 degrees, also contributes to a faster descent, demanding earlier flare inputs. A tailwind can have the same effect, accelerating ground speed and descent rate, and thus necessitating an earlier flare to avoid a hard landing. Another factor to consider is runway slope and surrounding terrain. A runway with an upward slope or rising terrain before the threshold can cause visual misperception, making the aircraft appear higher than it is. This can lead to a delayed flare if not corrected, as the radio height callouts used for assessing flare height may be affected. To prevent common mistakes like flaring too late or not enough, which can result in a hard landing, initiate the flare with positive but gentle back pressure. Avoid pushing forward on the side stick once the flare begins, as this ensures a smooth descent and minimizes the risk of underflare or tail strike. The aim is to reduce the descent rate without floating too far down the runway, which could increase the landing distance or risk overshooting. At around 20 feet, the retard auto callout will remind you to reduce thrust. Pull the thrust levers back to idle to ensure the proper deployment of ground spoilers when the wheels touch down. Maintaining pitch control during landing is vital. As mentioned, the A320's flight control laws change once you enter the flare. 
During this phase, you'll manually control the pitch of the aircraft using the side stick. The flare involves a smooth increase in pitch, typically around four degrees, which results in a slight decrease in the aircraft's descent rate. However, avoid trying to extend the flare in an attempt to achieve a softer landing. This can lead to excessive floating, increasing both the landing distance and the risk of tail strike. Once the main gear touches down, your focus should shift to smoothly flying the nose wheel onto the runway. There's often a residual pitch-up moment caused by the deployment of the ground spoilers, but the A320's flight control laws automatically compensate for most of this effect. It's important to avoid holding the nose up for too long, as this can lead to a hard nose wheel touchdown or even a tail strike in some cases. When it comes to lateral and directional control, especially during crosswind landings, precision is key. During the final approach, you'll typically use a crabbed approach technique where the aircraft is aligned with the runway's extended centerline, but slightly angled into the wind to counteract the crosswind. During the flare, you'll need to use the rudder to align the aircraft with the runway heading. The goal is to reduce the crab angle and land as close to straight on the center line as possible. At the same time, if you notice the aircraft drifting downwind, you may need to apply lateral inputs on the side stick to maintain center line alignment. In strong crosswind conditions, it's often necessary to apply a slight bank angle into the wind to prevent the aircraft from drifting off course. However, be cautious not to apply too much bank, as this could lead to a wingtip strike or a sharklet strike if the bank angle is too aggressive. A small residual crab angle, up to about 5 degrees, is acceptable and safer than overbanking. It's crucial to recognize when a go-around is necessary. If your approach becomes destabilized, if the touchdown point appears unachievable, or if you encounter excessive sink rates close to the ground, executing a go-around is the safest option. For example, if you are approaching the runway with an excessive descent rate, the pilot monitoring should call out sink rate to alert you. At this point, you'll need to make a quick decision, correct the approach or execute a go-around. Remember, it's better to go around and try again than to risk a dangerous landing. Once you've touched down, your next focus is on the rollout phase. Avoid the temptation to keep the nose high during the initial rollout to increase drag. This technique can be inefficient and may also increase the risk of a tail strike, particularly if auto brake medium is engaged. Instead, focus on smoothly controlling the aircraft's deceleration and staying aligned with the runway centerline. Be prepared to counteract any remaining crosswind forces during the rollout by using the rudder as needed. Landing the A320 smoothly and safely demands a solid grasp of stabilized approaches, precise flare techniques, and skilled management of pitch, lateral, and directional control. Mastering these fundamentals and applying them consistently ensures you can handle even the most challenging conditions, whether it's crosswinds, high altitude airports, or tricky runways. With practice and attention to detail, you'll consistently deliver confident, controlled landings. Thanks for tuning into this tutorial on the A320 landing technique.